Hello and welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. We're excited you're here to learn about some great schools today. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including the name of the school, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their programs. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. This has been uh, one of many different sessions that have been hosted as part of program for Illinois students. We hope you've been enjoying that. Um, throughout the past couple of days. Um, we want to remind you that this presentation and all of those other sessions have been recorded and they're going to be available within, uh, within about a week at that same website where you register so that you can go back, watch it again, or check out more, more schools. And that website is strivescan.com slash Illinois. All right, well, I'm really excited to introduce our first school today. We're going to be hearing from California Lutheran University. Hello everyone. Sorry, it took me a quick second to get set up. My name is Diana Hernandez. I'm an admission counselor at the Office of Undergraduate Admission at California Lutheran University located in Thousand Oaks, California in Southern California. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm happy to be with you all today. If any questions come up, don't hesitate to let me know. So a little bit about Cal Lutheran, we'll start kind of general. So who we are, so we are, like I mentioned, down in Southern California, we have just over 3,000 undergraduate students with an average class size of 17 and a 15 to one faculty to student ratio. I always like to share with students, if you don't want professors to know your name, chances are we may not be for you. And I'm okay saying that because I don't want to promise something I know you wouldn't be able to receive on campus. And the truth is our professors take an interest in who you are and they like to be part of your academic journey. And even after, they definitely will take an interest in continuing to mentor the students and helping them achieve what they want from their careers. As you can see, some of our numbers listed on there, we are a minority majority school, meaning that majority of our students do identify as coming from underrepresented backgrounds and diversity is something that is central to our institution. Diversity can be talked about in a lot of different ways. I'll just highlight two of those ways. One of them is we are California Lutheran University. There is no hiding. We have a religious affiliation. However, we feel like religion is a get to, not a have to. So you get the opportunity to explore your own faith. Maybe learn more about others, but it's not something that is forced upon you. There is no mandatory chapel. We do have 39 different faiths represented on our campus. The other piece that's important to mention is our designation as a Hispanic serving institution that we gained in 2016. This allows us to really look at all of our students that come from those traditionally marginalized backgrounds and see how are we serving them, where are our gaps, and what are we doing to address them. Experiential learning is something that's also central to who we are as an institution. We'll highlight just three of uh, three ways in which you can be part of that experiential learning prog programs here on campus. One of those is through study abroad. Study abroad can take you to over 80 different countries. We do have amazing programs where students are able to do internships, to do research while they're abroad, while still being on track and graduating in four years. We do have that as a guarantee for our students. The internships that we have, we have career services. They're a lifelong service, which means that even 25 years after graduation, if any one of our alums needed help revamping their resume, doing a cover letter, negotiating a salary, really anything along those lines, they're able to go back to career services and they will help them at no additional cost. During their time on campus, they can sign up to get weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly emails that are posted or that are about the postings that are in their career of interest. So for example, if you wanted to specifically work with children, you can get an email that lets you know all of the different internship opportunities available to you. And then of course, research. All of our professors are still active in the field. A lot of them are doing their own research on campus and students are able to be part of that faculty-led research. And that's something that every single one of our majors can do and actually does on our campus. When I was a student here at Cal Lutheran, when I heard research, I typically thought biology, biochemistry, those hard sciences. But the truth is theater arts, multimedia, um, music, they're all doing research. And it's just as important for those students to get funded and have that opportunity as well for us. 
Living on campus is something that is a great opportunity for our students. We do have some of the nicest residence halls in California. There is no communal restroom that you go down the hall and share with everyone on your floor, which as a student, that was a great perk for me. We have what we call the suite layout, where you'll have kind of like a suite or a mini apartment and you'll share that space with that most for other students. So of course, in the pandemic that has switched, we are still in the process of determining what that will look like for our students in the coming fall. We also do have free housing, um, I'm sorry, guaranteed housing and parking for our students all four years. We do have free parking as well as free laundry services on our campus. We have Jamba Juice, Starbucks, The Habits, and Ullman Commons, which is our main dining facility for our students to utilize their meal plan in. Now the application process, we are Common App exclusive. That is the only way to apply for admission to Cal Lutheran will require your official high school transcripts and a letter of recommendation. Cal Lutheran is test optional. So if you have those test scores and you wanna send them our way, we will be more than happy to get those for you and have those be part of the application review process for you. However, if you don't have them or you are not choosing to take the exams, that is completely okay. Your application will still be reviewed exactly the same way. You will not be docked or anything along those lines. We do have two deadlines. The first is early action. It is a non-binding process. So you are just signing up kind of for an early notification where you are telling Cal Lutheran, hey, I'm interested. But again, you're not committing to coming to Cal Lutheran just yet. We also have January 1st as our regular decision deadline. Now for either one of these deadlines, you will automatically be considered for academic scholarships that could potentially go up to full tuition. Our regular academic scholarships go up to $25,000. You're automatically considered for that. It does not matter which deadline you apply for. Now our scholarships that go up to full tuition, you are required to apply early action. And so you'll have a little bit more time to kind of go through the process, but also come to campus and compete for that full tuition scholarship. We also have our public price promise, where if you're admitted into any of the six UC, so it's not all of them, but there are specific six, we will match their average cost of attendance, which means coming to Cal Lutheran for the cost of a public school. We definitely try to make Cal Lutheran be as affordable as possible. This is our contact information, and I'll also go ahead and drop my direct contact information in the chat. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those for you. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much, Vanna, for sharing more about Cal Lutheran today. Our next school that we're going to hear from is the University of Redlands. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sebastian Brown. I'm the admissions counselor here at the University of Redlands that works with all of our students from the great state of Illinois. Um, and I'm also a Redlands alum. So again, uh, if you have any questions, definitely utilize that Q&A chat. So the University of Redlands, we are located in Redlands, California, um, also in Southern California. So we are about 60 minutes from the beach, the mountains, the desert, and Disneyland, all equidistant to our campus. We're a little bit further inland than the coastal area, which is nice that our students have access to Los Angeles, Orange County, even San Diego, but we're not in the metropolitan city area um, and really inundated with that notorious California traffic. Um, parking is also free here at Redlands, and we also are completing the uh, southmost uh, part of this metro link, which will allow our students public transportation into all of those uh, you know, major Southern California destinations around this time next year. So whether you do public transportation, or have transportation um, of your own, or are flying in and out of our Ontario airport, which is about 30 minutes away from campus, um, there's plenty of uh, to do for our students just outside of the main Redlands area. So here at the University of Redlands, we're passionate about educating the hearts and minds of our students. So I'll start by talking about the heart and the things that our students get involved in outside of their academics. Here at Redlands, we're home to about 2,400 undergraduate students, but we come from a little all over the place. We are about a third of our students are either out of state or international, and we're represented by 45 different states in 45 different countries. We're also about one in three students that are first generation or the first in their families to go to college. We have a lot of opportunities for students to be involved on our campus, um, whether that is Greek life, clubs and organizations, competing as a student athlete or intramural sports, which about 80% of our students participate in at some point during their four years. Here at Redlands, we really drive home the um, community of being a Bulldog. And so we guarantee your housing on campus all four years as well. 
Uh, there's 14 different residential halls that students can choose from, including two apartment styles. So you really get to um, experience the different flavors or themes amongst all of our academic or our uh, housing facilities. But academic success and um, services as well are really important in making sure that our students feel supported so that they're successful here at Redlands. For example, you're entitled to two hours of tutoring per subject per week included in your tuition here at Redlands. That's on top of any of the additional tutoring you may be getting from your faculty or from your peers in um, office hours or study sessions and things like that. Uh, two of the largest experiences that our students will have here at Redlands are really centered around community service and studying abroad. Here at Redlands, we send over half of our students abroad. Um, one of the reasons for that is kind of our different calendar system. So we operate on what's called a 4-4-1 schedule. It's a four month fall semester from September to December, a four month spring from January to April, and then an optional May term. So if you don't take our May term, you do have a four month summer break, all of May, June, July, and August. If you do take that May term class, it's an opportunity to really focus or hone in on a specific uh, content or subject and really master that class um, and not have to, you know, uh, focus on other studies during that one month. Some students will also study abroad during that time. So you have an optional four month study abroad or four week study abroad. I also mentioned community service learning. We consistently do over 120,000 hours of service every year. And we're consistently uh, recognized as a national top producer for both the Peace Corps and the Fulbright Scholarship um, in our graduates. Here at Redlands, our average class size is about 18, meaning our student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one. So there's plenty of opportunities for our students to connect with their faculty and see them as mentors and advisors. Um, not only does that help with their studies, but also life after Redlands with career preparation or letters of recommendation for graduate school and things like that. Here's a kind of short list of all of the academic programs that we offer here at Redlands. Two that I'll kind of point your attention to that are a little different and not offered at many other schools. One is the Johnston Center for Integrative Studies that effectively allows students to create their own um, uh, major or design their own program. So for example, we have had graduates with degrees officially in fields like astropolitics. Um, that student has gone on to work as a lobbyist for NASA in Washington, DC and our spatial studies program, which uses geospatial mapping and data analysis to help drive decision-making whether that is in an environmental science context or business, um, it's a pretty interdisciplinary, um, but very technical based program that we offer. Here at Redlands, we are uh, test optional from here on out. So students that choose to submit test scores, of course, we'll consider that with the rest of your application, but it's no longer required. We have two central deadlines, early action, which is November 15th and regular decision, which is January 15th. We also are um, willing to waive your application fee if you connect with me as your admissions counselor before you submit your application, we are a common app school. Last thing is then um, financial aid. So here at Redlands, over 90% of our students receive some form of financial assistance and our average financial aid package is over $46,000 per year. Usually that's a combination of um, need and merit-based aid. Our merit-based awards this year went up to $32,000 alone. Plus we have some talent-based scholarships that students can apply for. Last thing I'll mention, especially regarding financial aid is our four-year graduation guarantee. So if you ever get pushed into having to take classes beyond your fourth year, the University of Redlands will cover the cost of tuition for you to complete those courses. There's some general information in ways to uh, stay in touch. We are doing in-person tours right now. So if you wanted to come and experience it for yourself, um, reach out to us and I'll put my contact information in the chat as well. Thanks. Awesome, thank you so much, Sebastian, for sharing University of Redlands tonight. Our next school is going to be Pacific University, Oregon. Awesome, well, hello everybody. We're gonna move a little bit further north up the coast to Pacific University, and I'm going to be your admissions counselor here. So my name is Derek Nagley, and if you apply to Pacific, I get the pleasure of working with all the students from Illinois and most of the Midwest. But what that means is if you apply, I'm actually the guy on the other end of the phone, the other end of the email, and the other end of the application talking with you and helping you through the whole process. And Pacific itself, we're a small private liberal arts university. We're located in the town of Forest Grove, Oregon. So where that is, if you're kind of getting an idea, is a little bit northwest of Portland. 
We're about 30 minutes from downtown. We're about an hour from the Oregon coast. We're about an hour and a half drive from the airport, but you can get to campus for, with mass transportation. So it's kind of the best of both worlds where we're far enough out, 15 minutes off campus, you're hiking in the Tillamook National Forest, these amazing trees and mountains you see behind me, or about half an hour you're sitting in downtown. And again, you don't need to find a friend to drive you to the airport. You'll be able to do that through mass transportation. So it's an amazing area to get to a lot of different things, whether that's exploring the Northwest or being able to connect with places like Nike, Intel, Xerox, Columbia, all these big name companies that have an access to our students at Pacific University. And for our students, we offer over 65 different majors, minors, and programs across lots of different disciplines. We're best known for our pre-health professions, so things like optometry, physical therapy, exercise science. We're really, really strong in those areas, and you'll hear a lot about them, because a lot of that is our 31 graduate programs. But we also have nationally ranked creative writing, education, social work, and business classes. So you're going to find a lot of different things to study at Pacific. And I want you to come in and take a look at all those different opportunities that are there. Because when you apply to Pacific, you're not applying to a school within the school. You're not applying to a certain program or an honor step. But that we treat all of those 65 different majors, minors, and programs in the best possible education sense. And so what that means is for our students, you're going to be in a smaller school about 1,900 undergraduate students and about 2,000 graduate students who are primarily on a separate campus. So the Forest Grove campus itself is basically an undergraduate campus. Our average class size is only 19 students. So you're not gonna be in a huge lecture hall seating three or 400 people. That would be all of our incoming freshmen. Instead, as was mentioned earlier, you're gonna be in a small class where your professors know your name. They're gonna call on you in class. And at Pacific, every single class is taught by full professors. No TAs, no grad students doing any teaching there but that you're learning from the best and that they have open office hours. So you don't need to go find a tutor. You can go ask your professor for help on your homework. And we also have a four-year graduation guarantee for those majors. We want you to be able to come in and get a four-year education, not fifth years, six years, or victory laps, but that you get a four-year education while you're here at Pacific. And more importantly, when you leave Pacific, we want you leaving with more than just a handshake, a good luck, and a diploma. Yes, that is very important. We want you to get the education while you're here, but we also want you to have the real life experience in a resume to back that up so that when you go on, whatever that next step is, graduate school or going in into workforce, you can do that right away without having to go back and do extra steps. And as the top private research university in the Northwest and one of the top eight university research institutions in the West, you're gonna be able to find that opportunity starting your freshman, sophomore, year, not waiting till you're a junior or senior. And this is for all the programs, not just the sciences where they get really cool pictures, but also things like creative writing students writing their own work their freshman year, education students being in a classroom as early as your freshman year. Because with that four-year guarantee, you don't have to declare a major until the end of your sophomore year. So you can come in and try things out. And then as you can see with our numbers, you're going to be able to take that next step and go on. And 93% of our graduates last year are in graduate school, in an internship, or on a career path. That's amazing that our students can be able to do that in the world we're in right now, so know what we can do going forward as well. Along with that, though, that's a lot of information about academics, but the cool thing with Pacific is we want you to have an outlet, whether that's joining some of our 70 different clubs and organizations, like student government, Greek life, or our Hawaii club, being part of the orchestra, or our mariachi band, or singing in a choir, acting in a play, or being part of our 24 varsity, 20 intramural, and 10 club sports on campus. Our students are active and we want you to continue to do that because no matter how many of these things you do, you still get to graduate in those four years. And that also applies to the idea of not just the clubs and the sports, but taking that education outside of the classroom. So whether you wanna experience the Northwest and learn how to surf on the Oregon coast, or you wanna do study abroad, whether that's for a full semester or one of our two week travel classes in January, or giving back through community, our students are again able to do all of these as part of their education at Pacific, not a separate step or extra years. And what that means is when you apply to Pacific, we have no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships. So again, no extra paperwork for you. You're applying to Pacific, just like every other student. We are through common applications. So you're gonna send in your application, you're gonna send in your um, transcript, you're gonna send in a letter of recommendation, and we are test optional. So if you feel your test scores show us something about you and improve your academic portfolio, send them along, we'd love to see them. But it's not going to hurt you to not have taken the test or to send them in and have them be a little bit lower. Because at Pacific, you're automatically qualified for our academic merit scholarship and over 99% of our students at Pacific receive financial aid. 
Our merit scholarships range from fifteen dollars to $27,000 a year and are guaranteed for those full four years you're at Pacific. We also have opportunities to come and visit campus and earn scholarship and for things like music, dance, theater, speech and debate and over 25 other areas that you can apply for additional scholarship. So as I said, I'm your admissions counselor here at Pacific University. My name is Derek and I'm glad to answer any additional questions you have. You can also take a quick snapshot of this slide and it'll take you right to my contact information, but I'm glad to answer any of those questions and look forward to helping you become a box. Thank you so much, Jerry, for presenting on Pacific University, Oregon tonight. All right, so we've heard from three great schools. We have two more to go. So just wanna remind all of our attendees that that Q&A button's there. So any question, it can be about study abroad or majors or an office or a resource or an activity on campus. So think about dropping something in that Q&A um, to make sure you're getting your questions answered tonight. All right, so now we're going to move on and hear from our very next school, which will be Reed College. Hey, Bill, Thanks you, so much. <laughs> we got it. We figured it out eight months in or still. It happens to everyone, right? Um, it's just 2020 and 2021 in a nutshell. Absolutely. Um, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with my presentation, but that's okay. We will fly solo. Um, so uh, are you me. sure? Would you like to um, would you like to just pause? We can go to the next school and I can just have you loop right back in if you just like a couple minutes. It's not a problem. Um, it's okay. We've okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk a little bit about Reed College. Um, we are a small liberal arts college located in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I attended Reed as a student, graduating with my degree in psychology. I'm really happy to be representing Reed now on the other side of the desk in many ways. Um, and a couple key takeaway points to share with you all today is our commitment to intellectual rigor, to curiosity and inquiry. That's a strong defining feature of our community here on campus. We're known as one of the most intellectual colleges in the country, and we're regularly ranked um, as one of the top PhD producers. Um, you know, that's something that many schools are sharing with you as, as well today. Um, but whether it's science and math, social science, humanities and arts, Reed is ranked between the top third and top fifth highest producer of doctoral degrees. Um, and that just speaks again to the high degree of engagement and the passions of our student body. That's something that students are cultivating here on our beautiful campus in Portland, Oregon. Um, another key aspect is that strong uh, relationship to the city of Portland. We're only 15, 20 minutes away from downtown Portland, 15 minutes away some, from some fun vintage shopping streets here. Um, in the Southeast. Really nice to just have all of the resources of a city, but also just the beautiful greenery of our campus. You can see our great lawn behind me, classic brochure spot. Um, like I'm saying, one of the key aspects of Reed is a commitment to intellectual inquiry, and that can be met through two bookends of the undergraduate experience here, our intro humanities class and our thesis requirement in a student's senior year. Um, we're a small student body, only 1,400 students, 17 to 1, um, sorry, 9 to 1 student to faculty ratio, 17% class size. You're not going to hide in a read class. All of our professors come to read because they want to teach students, they want to engage directly with undergraduates. I'm also happy to share that we're an entirely undergraduate institution. So anytime a professor is looking for a grad student or a student to help out um, TA a class or engage in research, that opportunity is coming directly to you as a student. In your very first year, at Reed, you are reading, writing, um, analyzing texts from the ancient Mediterranean, from Mexico City and the Harlem Renaissance, um, bringing in your own personal experiences, but also learning what it means to engage in a collegiate environment. We know that our students are coming from a variety of different academic backgrounds, but sharing a general love for learning. And so we really care about providing these resources and a student's very first year here at Reed um, to bring them up to par and prepare them for success for the next four years. The key um, aspect of your first year at Reed is your paper conference. After every single essay that you write, you are sitting down individually one-on-one -on -one with a professor talking through the strengths and weaknesses of the paper. Um, the professor is getting to know who you are, not just as a student, but also helping you through your general adjustment to, uh, to campus, getting involved in classes, making friends. And from the get-go, you're beginning to develop self-advocacy skills, um, navigating read, reaching out for help when you want it. Our teachers here are always ready to help students, um, help provide them with those next steps, um, and just developing that autonomy that will bring you um, through life at read. 
our other important com <laughs> our other important important component of our academics here is the senior thesis. This is an independent research project every single student completes in their final year at Reed. Um, and yes, truly it is everyone, every single student is spending an entire year researching, analyzing a topic of interest and presenting a dissertation defense on it. Um, that might mean, you know, in the humanities, putting together a dance, exploring the intersection of gender roles in um, boy bands, um, having folks dress up as different genders, putting on just incredible costumes, music, lights, the whole nine yards. Um, another student spent a whole year researching the impact of uh, radiation on surrounding ecological environments. That's my sneaky way of talking about Reed's nuclear reactor on campus. What? One of the only um, undergraduate schools with a research nuclear reactor. You can get involved. You don't need to be a physics major. You could be a history major, have a passion for um, nuclear reaction and become a licensed operator. Um, in year four years of undergrad. The academics at Reed are also characterized by a close um, learning environment. All of our classes are conference style, um, average class size of 17 students. You're always engaging in topics at hand, talking about recent uh, literature in that field. Um, and that's one thing that really prepares our students for success after read. Um, like I mentioned, we're one of the highest PhD producers. Many folks will go on for graduate degrees, further research in academia. But even if that isn't where your heart lies, you're developing critical reading, writing, analytical skills. You're learning how to read a, a vast quantity of literature and distill it down to its key points. And that's just developing your toolkit of problem solving skills that will take you far after read. Um, many students after read go on to careers in education, entrepreneurship, and, and nonprofits. Um, the other key takeaway is a system of values. We are a residential school. We're a small school of only 1,400 students. So you're living, you're working with your peers, um, and we're all bound together by the honor principle. It's an undefined uh, set of values, thinking about how are you treating each other honorably? How are you engaging with your peers? Is it honorable to you know, leave a mess in the common room? Um, and that all leans into joint decision-making, communal research solving, and again, just speaks to a student body um, where folks are actively thinking about how to support each other through those four years. Um, I could talk about student clubs and organizations. Certainly we have those as well. We have a cheese club, 30 different cheeses on campus. There's many opportunities to get off and engaged in Portland through internships, through off-campus career opportunities. Um, I'll go ahead and throw my contact info in the chat um, for anyone who has further questions. I'll highlight the last email here, write a read at read.edu, go straight to our student body. Um, so if you do have any questions, you wanna talk specifically to a bio major, talk to someone who's studied abroad, they're happy to answer those questions. Um, and then finally, with our admission policies, we are an entirely um, holistic evaluation of applications. So we want to read every part of your application, get to know who you are and use that to paint a picture, not just looking at a GPA um, or your classes. We are, um, meet, we have no and application now, fee. Yeah. We have reached the end of your six minutes. I know it yeah. flies by. No, you're all good. I'll just put a little more information in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much for presenting on Reed College. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we're going to be moving on to our next school, which will be the University of Oregon. Hi, everybody. My name is Olivia. I am the Regional Admissions Counselor for the University of Oregon. And I graduated from the University of Oregon. So um, let me tell you a little bit about our school. I know that these go by really fast. So of course, I will put my information in the chat. Um, you're welcome to set up a meeting with me another time to get some more information. When you come and visit us, you can um, take a flight from Illinois straight to Eugene. You can also fly into Portland, which is two hours north of us. Eugene is the second largest city in Oregon. We're a public liberal arts research institution. Eugene is not very cold, especially compared to Illinois, but if you find yourself missing snow, you can take an hour drive over to the Cascade Mountains, or you can take an hour drive over to the coast. We're right in the middle of both of those places. We have a lot of outdoor recreation opportunities for students, so uh, we really want students to take advantage of that. We have a hashtag we use called Exploring, which really just encourages students to go out and explore the beautiful uh, Pacific Northwest. Our campus is 295 acres and it takes about 15 minutes, give or take, to walk from one end of campus to another. 
We are number one, uh, rated number one as a green city based on factors such as our air quality, recycling, bike friendliness, and transportation. We're also a leader in sustainability, which is a common thread that you'll see throughout our campus. All students get a, for a student ID, which doubles as a bus pass. So you get free public transportation everywhere. If you wanna go downtown to the mall, anywhere throughout the city, or even if you wanna take the bus from one end of campus to the other, which I did a lot of times. We do get all four seasons, of course, since we have these beautiful trees that you see here. And so it does rain, uh, but it does not rain all of the time. Our campus demographics, we have close to 19,000 undergraduate students. So we like to call ourselves a Goldilocks institution, meaning we're not too small, but we're not too big. You get some of the big school things through our different sporting events, and you get our smaller school field with our 16 to one student teacher ratio and our median class size of 20. We are a tier one national public research university and we're part of the AAU, the Association of American Universities, and we're one of 32 public um, you know, uh, public schools part of the AAU. Being a research university matters because the type of research that we do um, impacts the foundation for major advances in areas such as health, medicine, economics, energy, and more. So as an undergraduate student, you have the opportunity to get involved in research everywhere on our campus. We have uh, 168 academic programs across our nine schools and colleges. If you come in and you're not sure what you wanna do, that's absolutely okay. Uh, majority of our freshman students come in exploring. I myself explored a lot during freshman year. And um, we have um, a lot of uh, freshman programs to help you kind of figure out what it is that you wanna do. Some of our popular programs, our College of Art and Sciences, is our largest college population wise. 60% of our majors are in this college, including things like English, biology, history, and theater. Our Lundquist College of Business is in the top 1% of business schools worldwide. So that's another really popular program. Um, other top programs are architecture, journalism, physics, and psychology, to name a few. We also have our Honors College, which is in the top 10 Honors Colleges uh, ranked uh, in public institutions nationally. When students are on campus, we really encourage them to go out and see the world. So that is studying abroad. We have over 300 programs to choose from. So whether you wanna shadow a doctor in Ghana or shadow an artist in Greece, there's really a program for everyone. And we even have pre-freshman programs where you can study that summer between your senior year in high school and that freshman year in college, going to places such as London and Singapore. And our current um, seniors incoming class who have signed up are getting ready to um, engage in these different programs. We have over 300 clubs on our campus. Um, something that I love about our sports is, I don't know if you've ever watched a duck game, but at our football game, something we say in our stadium all the time is it never rains in Austin Stadium. Of course, rain falls, but our energy is so big and it's so loud that we don't feel it. So a lot of outsiders come and just are confused, but it does not rain in Austin Stadium. We know that building culture starts with living on campus. We do have a live on requirement for the first year. Students have 10 different residential halls to choose from. And you can go on our website at housing.uoregon.edu to see what those rooms look like and take a little virtual tour. You're also welcome to live in an academic residential community, which is just a community of students with shared interests and passions for inquiry. Uh, we have different communities such as our business community, health and science, and we have more identity-based communities such as our LGBTQI plus community um, and our multicultural community. Here are some of our top employers. Of course, you probably recognize some of the names on this list. At U of O, we wanna set our students up for success, whether that's going to graduate school, law school, medical school, or going into your first career or your uh, forever career. Our general education requirements are pretty straightforward. If you do find that you have um, a deficit or you're deficient in one of these areas, I would really encourage you to work with your high school counselor to see if you can make sure that you make up one of these classes in your senior schedule. And if you're not able to, of course, send me a message or reach out, reach out to us and we can talk about our alternative admissions process. When we evaluate student applications, we do take a holistic approach. So we're not just looking at your GPA, of course, we're looking at how you got to your GPA. We're looking at your grade trends, uh, your activities. Make sure you take advantage of all those areas on your applications. I know there's a special circumstance at essay you can write. The whole world has been in a special circumstance for over 12 months. So you really wanna make sure um, that you highlight and just talk about all the things that you've done and what you've been going through. Our November 1st is our early action deadline. It is non-binding, which means you do not need to commit to us. 
Uh, we want to make sure you have time to make the decision that you, is right for you. Uh, and just let us know by May 1st. Our regular deadline is January 15th. We have the Oregon Guarantee, which says that for up to five years, your tuition will not change. So that allows you to financially plan for college. Some of the scholarships that we have, some are merit-based and automatic, such as the Summit and Apex and Excellent Scholarships. Our stamps is our most prestigious. It covers full tuition, fees, and enrichment funds. I do want to know also we are test blind. So even if you do send us your test scores, we will not use them for scholarships in the upcoming year. What do you need to do next to find more information? You can attend some of our virtual events. We have Duck Days events coming up. And of course, staying in contact with me. Here is my information. I'll also drop it in the chat. And that is it. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Elena, for sharing the University of Oregon with us. All right, so we've heard from five great schools and all of our representatives have been dropping their information in the chat with key links. So we wanna make sure that our attendees have time to grab that. And also for anyone, for all of you to pause and just think if there's any questions you wanna put in that Q and A um, while we still have a few minutes together. So to give everyone a chance to take care of those things, I'm gonna ask each of our representatives to come back on camera and we're gonna do one Q and A question live together. Now, I'm gonna have you all go in the exact same order that you presented. As the person in front of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your mic and jump in with your answer. So I'd love to hear from each of you about your favorite or a favorite of the students that, um, you know, really is an event or a tradition, academic, student life, whatever it is, um, but something that gives just a little extra insight into your student community and really what makes your campus um, culture, you know, unique and special to your school. So we're going to start with Diana at Cal Lutheran, and we'll go through the group from there. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. This is a great question. I'll share one of my favorite traditions, and the reason this one came to mind is because it's actually happening on Friday, um, is our annual luau. And so this is put on by our Hawaii students, and it's put on by our students for our students. It's probably one of our largest events that's put on by students. and. Um, in person, it'd be a little bit different, but we have like food and music and really their mission is to cultivate the Aloha spirit and bring it to our campus and cultivate community, family and friendship. And this year they're able to do it virtually. And so I'm really excited to see what it looks like. I'm gonna be on campus helping them out, doing anything I can, but that is something that happens every year. It's something I look forward to. I um, mean, I know a lot of students. Yeah, here at Redlands, my favorite event takes place during orientation, especially for out-of-state students, and that is the Target Takeover. So the university actually rents the local Target out from like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. They have discounts and free giveaways and a lot of music. Um, and as an out-of-state student, it's the perfect opportunity to get your fridge or your TV so you don't have to, you know, try and bring it on the plane with you um, come to California. And my favorite tradition of all time is being a bulldog. Um, we have the world's cutest mascot and no one can tell me otherwise. Um, so her name is Addie. Every school says they have therapy dogs during finals weeks. We have her 24 seven. And if you wanna meet a sassy bulldog, follow her on Instagram at you are mascot. Um, she is a gem. I don't know how I'm gonna follow that one up, especially since our mascot's a dragon. So I'm gonna go somewhere else entirely. So we have this bench on campus that we call the spirit bench. and any group on campus can paint it however they want to. And really the only rule is it has to be done when it's dark out. And people get really, really creative. I remember senior year walking out to go to my class and seeing the entire Simpsons living room. Um, someone had actually gone to Goodwill to get all of the equipment and then painted it to actually look like a cartoon. Um, it always gets really creepy around Halloween and somebody adds a zombie to it. So it's really fun and really unique to see what students will come up with. And it gets really competitive, especially around like the club fair and things like that, it'll change color like every hour, even though it's technically supposed to be dry before you paint over it. That's fantastic. Um, well, following on the theme of mascots, Reed's mascot is the Griffin, but our unofficial mascot is the Doyle Owl. Um, this is one of our favorite annual traditions. It is a large statue of an owl, about three feet high, 300 pounds, big cement block, and annually it'll come up, it'll appear on the lawn, on the lawn and just the bells go out, people grab their friends, grab chains and shovels, and it's a big battle to see who can keep the owl for the next year. It's been frozen in a block of ice. 
um, trying to chisel it out. It's been suspended in the middle of campus, trying to climb a flagpole to get a key. This last year, it was covered in ranch dressing, probably my least favorite. Um, but it's a really exciting tradition to get the owl, see the owl, take pictures with it, um, and really just brings out the best of the reef community. So many, so many great things. Okay, um, I'm just gonna go the food route because I am definitely a foodie. I think one of my favorite traditions at the University of Oregon is our street fair. Um, different times during the year, we have a street fair out on 13th Street where they have food from a lot of local restaurants and stuff and just food trucks and carts. And a lot of students, this is a time where everybody comes outside. The weather is beautiful. Me personally, I do, I'm going down the line. I'm, I'm trying everything. So um, as a foodie, that's just one of my favorite things to do on campus is wait for that time of the year with, the, with all the food comes out with the street fair um, and just lot, go down the line. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is such a fun range of answers. That's why I love this question. Um, and all of you act so fun tonight with these awesome, you know, I want to go like look up the owl and the bulldog and see the painting and like check out the events and, you know, the street fair and the luau. So I hope that our attendees and those watching at home are also thinking, oh, I want to go check that out to maybe kind of think about, could I see myself on campus being a part of that event, being a part of this community um, as a part of your college search? So we have reached the end of our time together tonight. And first, I want to say thank you to these awesome admissions representatives for just not only sharing the facts, the figures, all the logistical information, but your obvious passion for the experience in and out of the classroom for your students on campus. Um, for everyone who's watching, whether live or the recording, you know, these are the best people. Admissions counselors love building relationships, will answer any question, and they are your go-to resource because six minutes only gives you a small peek about any of these schools. There's so much more to learn, so much more to discover, and I hope that tonight has piqued your curiosity and you're going to be following up um, to learn more because maybe you are finding your next home uh, for your life in and out of the classroom on college campus. Now for the logistics stuff. All right, when you close your window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate any feedback you can provide. Remember, it is just a quick little survey. Um, we have reached the end of our Illinois programming tonight, but we hope that you will go back and watch this again, share it with family and friends and check out other sessions as well. All of the programming for Illinois students has been recorded and you can find all of those session recordings in about a week's time at the same website where you register and that's strivescan.com slash Illinois. So thanks again everyone for spending time with us today. Best of luck in your college search and decision process. Have an awesome evening. Bye.